I'm John Verdal, uh, ophthalmologist at Vance Thompson Vision, uh, describing a paper that we're recently publishing. And a few years ago, uh, when I was working with David Harden, we had a patient that had residual astigmatism after having a toric lens placed. And not knowing exactly what the best approach would be next, uh, Dr. Harden asked me to do the math, because I was a former math teacher, and figure out how to do the vector analysis to determine where that lens should be rotated to. Ultimately, that work culminated in a free website known as astigmatismfix.com. And what the website does is a surgeon takes a patient that has had a toric lens already placed and enters the current manifest refraction after the toric lens was placed, which toric lens is in the eye and what axis it's at. This allows a back calculation to be performed with vector analysis that tells the surgeon which axis rotating the toric lens into would minimize the astigmatism. It's turned out to be much more popular than we expected with nearly a thousand unique entries uh, entered every month. With that information, we've been able to analyze that data and come out with some new insights. And in this recent paper, a couple of things that we learned is that between different IOL manufacturers, there's a higher rate of misalignment or rotation. Uh, we've also found that some manufacturer, manufacturers' types of IOLs have a tendency to rotate counterclockwise as opposed to equally clockwise or counterclockwise, which is a little bit counterintuitive to surgeons. Perhaps most importantly, we learned that almost 50% of the time with rotation of the toric lens to the ideal position, uh, the astigmatism can be minimized to less than a half diopter, which is a really nice and acceptable result.